Hello guys and welcome back. Right now, let's go ahead and complete the authentication for the load user. So before we proceed, we need to create a middleware. We are gonna call it all.js and inside there, we are gonna bring in the config. We also have to bring in the JWT, that's the JSON web token. And let's go ahead and create a function. So this function, we are going to name it the same thing like we named the file. And it's going to accept some couple of parameters, the request, the response, and the next. So the next is that whenever we are done with handling a middleware, it can move to the next middleware if there is something like that. So we have to grab the token from this uh, request header. So remember that we're using X Amazon token. And then we have to check if there is a token. So we can say if token, except we have a null value. So if there is a token, we can perform some operation, but let's go ahead and uh, handle it directly in case there is no token. So if there is no token, we just want to return a response, the status of 401 with a JSON message of uh, no, no token found. But if there is a token, we have to uh, use a try catch block because we want to make use of the JSON web token. It's more like uh, we are performing an assigned operation. We also want to cache that error in case there is any error. So inside here, we have to verify the token. So the way we can do that, we need to get the decoded token. So what we just have to do is to verify the token which we got, and then we have to pass in the password. So if you can recall that the password we are using is Amazon secret. Then if all these things work correctly, all we just have to do is to store, we have to store the Amazon user. Then the way we can do that is to assign a request header called Amazon user equals to that decoded value. So the decoded value is going to be coming with the ID because when we log in or register, we assign this token to the ID and this ID is stored in JSON web token uh, server and it returns it whenever we verify that. In case we have an error, all we just have to do is to use res.status.400, res.status400 with a JSON message of token is invalid so that's a, that's the way we can use json web token and let's go ahead and export this so we can export we can have multiple media ways so we can just simply say module.exports we can export it this way by passing multiple let's just export it directly so if you have multiple media ways, you can use an object and pass multiple media ways then we can come over here and make use of it. So you can see why we are making use of Amazon user.id over here. So I'm just going to put down the auth and just import that automatically. So let me make sure that is the correct one and that's it. So right now let's go back and start our application. So one more thing I forgot is whenever we are done uh, storing the uh, the user to the request header, we can just go over to the next middleware. So I forgot to put that next. So right now our application has started and we want that whenever the user logs in, of course, let's say, for example, I'm going to log in with existing credentials. I'm going to just put this uh, password and hit login. It's going to bring also the product list screen if everything works perfectly. So I forgot to start the back end. So I'm just going to switch to the node API. And I'm just going to run the server. So let's go ahead and make that request once more. 
So if we perfectly log in, it should automatically bring us to this screen. So whenever we log in, like I said initially, the token is going to be stored in our local storage. For us to make use of that, we now need to create an action called load user. So this load user action, let me just go ahead and create that action. Load user. So this load user is going to be uh, called anytime our application opens. So let's go ahead and make use of this load user in app.js. So I'm just going to come over to come over to app.js. And the first thing you have to do is to grab in Redux. So I'm just going to uh, import Redux over here. So I'm just going to import from React Redux. So the things I need to import is the use dispatch. Now inside here, I can just uh, assign dispatch to use dispatch. Then I'm going to use the effect. Whenever our application opens, we have to dispatch. Let me just import this. We have to dispatch the load user. Oh, sorry, guys. And I think I imported the wrong one. I think this is the right one. So and we just call that method directly. So we are going to have an error because we've not actually, uh, we are making an assign request. Sorry, we are using an assign method and this is going to trigger an error. So for us to fix that, we have to come over here and put the assign. Then we can bring in the dispatch. So the dispatch is all dispatch props. And then we can just properly put the callback function. And let's go back and save. So this is going to automatically make a request whenever our application opens because it's called in the app.js. So let's, let me kind of console log load user and check in our console. You see automatically whenever our application opens, it's going to start making use of the load user. Now let's go ahead and create everything that we need to create in the load user. So the first thing is to dispatch a type of log loading with a payload of of null. So let's go ahead and save that to see whether it should take effect. Okay, I think it should because, or maybe later we can come about that. And the next thing we have to do is to grab a token. So the token is going to be coming from the assigned storage. Then we have to get item called at user token. So let's consider log this token to see exactly the token we are talking about. So you see that whenever we logged in, a token is automatically stored in our local storage. And what we have to do next is to make an Axios request with a method of get, because we are making at this assigned request, sorry, this Axios request, we are making it to this uh, route over here. So this route is on login slash user. Then we can set the headers. So the headers is exactly where we are going to be grabbing the token from with our middleware. So we have we are done with that. Now we are, it's going to give us a callback with the results and also the catch for any error. So coming back here, we can just return that response. So what we have to do whenever this thing uh, performs uh, perfectly, we just have to dispatch the type of user loaded. With the payload, the payload is going to be the user that is returned. So if you can recall in the last video, we talked about how we assign this to the reducer. Then in case we have any error, in case there is no user or the token was invalid, we have to just dispatch a return errors 
of error.response.data. For the status, let's set it to null, but for, we can just pass an ID of load fail. So you can use that ID to actually notify the user that uh, maybe you need to re-log in to continue. So I, I already showed you how you can use an ID to display an error. If you log in with, uh, let's say, let me use a wrong email address. And here I can just use a wrong password and let's send that. You see automatically it shows the error because you're using the ID to display that error. So, the, and lastly, we have to dispatch a type of auth error. So this auth error is going to clear any data with a payload of null. So the auth error, let's kind of check where it is coming from. And that's coming from our reducer, from auth reducer. It's going to automatically clear everything and reset everything back to default. So the log loading is going to be set to default. So that's why we have to do that. So let's say you're using something like a spinner. Once you dispatch this with the log loading, it's going to disappear. So that's how we can handle for our load user. Right now, let's go ahead and log in, close the app and reopen the application and see whether this is going to be active. If, if, it was, if it's going to be active, that means that we can automatically it's going to log us in without uh, telling us to log in again. So let's just give it, a, give it a couple of seconds. So guys, do not forget to hit the like button and also uh, the subscribe button. So let me just check. And uh, I think we've not yet handled that. So going back here, we check if the token is verified. So let's go ahead and check in our console. And we are getting a 404 not found error. So coming back to our back end, let's go to the server. We are making use of API slash login. So I'm just going to grab this, come over to auth actions. So we are making a request to API slash login slash user. So kind of check your own in case you are experiencing the same error. So automatically you see it brings us to the product list screen. Now let's go ahead and handle for the logout. So I want to use this menu icon over here to anytime that whenever we click on it, we will automatically want to log out the application. So the way we can do that is we can come over to the product header over here. So the first thing here is to create a method called on logout. So I'm just going to create a method here called on log out which is going to be a function and it's going to dispatch. So let me just bring that dispatch at the top. It's going to use dispatch from React Redux. And we just have to dispatch a function called logout. And before I dispatch that, I have to create a method in auth actions. So coming down here, handle logout. So we have to export a cons called logout, which is going to be a function, an assigned function. It's going to accept the dispatch, just like the previous ones, or dispatch props. And simply what you have to do is to clear, uh, clear anything from our assigned storage. So you can just await dot, sorry, await assigned storage dot remove item we have to clear that user token. Then when that is done, we just have to return a dispatch of clear every other value that is remaining in our reducer. So the way we can do that is to dispatch logout success. It's more like uh, uh, of error, then we have a payload of no. So that's how we can handle for the logout. And let's save that and come over to the product header and dispatch that logout. Now, making use of this method is very simple. We can just come over here. We are using the uh, we are using the hamburger. So the hamburger has a method called on press. So we can just pass that on logout. And lastly, whenever we click on logout, we have to navigate back to the authentication stack. So my system is kind of delaying. So we just have to navigate 
back to the earth stack so i think the navigate is at the top over there and let's make sure it's coming from the right source yeah and let's go ahead and give that a try and let's click on this so we should automatically be redirected to the all stack so i think i have to refresh the application so i started it but it's not working just come over to the hamburger we can wrap everything here with a borderless button then we can pass the unpress to that borderless button so it's very simple just grab the unpress from here and then lastly you can just spread the unpressed that's passing it to the border, uh, borderless button and let's kind of check and you can see automatically we logs out so that's how we can use the logouts